If you are a proponent of big steel, and I hope you are, in some situations, not all, but some situations, and you don't want to mess around, you want to fall a tree, you want to delimb a tree, or for that matter, you want to delimb a zombie, a la Resident Evil Extinction, I recommend this, a kukri. And if money is tight, the Ontario Kukri at 55 bucks. How's that for value? 10 out of 10, by the way. Yeah, 55 bucks for a freaking zombie Kukri knife. <laughs> and I'm just messing around, but I will make reference to that movie, movie here and there. Obviously, we're having fun here in Knife TV, Nut Fancy Project Year 7. Thanks for joining me. And like I said, 10 out of 10 for this blade. It's been in the project since 2009. This knife. Yeah, I know. Finally getting around to reviewing it. Recommending it. This is not the only Kukri I have reviewed and pretty much loved. Let's go back in the time machine. And you might remember this review. Now Duracoated, by the way. This is the same blade. It is the Cold Steel Gurkha Kukri. And it is my favorite Gurkha Kukri out there that I've used so far. There's some other good ones. The Nepalese ones, they're the original, genuine, genuine Kukris are amazing. And go to this video and we'll talk about all types of philosophy, where the knife design comes from, you know, the martial use of the blade in history. I'm not going to cover all that now. It's already out there in the playlists. Look it up if you're interested. But this knife was at least a 10 out of 10. I think I may have even given it an 11 out of 10. Yeah, once again, this is Duracoated because this is SK5 steel uncoated. It was asking for all types of rust issues, especially after our testing and multiple outings. What a great blade. It really is excellent. Great heft. This sucker is really thick. 0.31 inches in thickness. I'm talking the cold steel Kukri here. Swings well. That forward heft. Amazing chopping performance, just like you saw in Resident Evil <laughs> by Alice. But let's say you don't have 200 bucks. You don't mind running a carbon steel Kukri. Most of them are, by the way. And so now I will recommend this one. The Ontario Model 6420. Come on down. 55 bucks at Chestnut Chestnut Ridge Knife Company. Link at the top. Tell them nothing fancy sent you. Great prices at that shop. Have been for years. And I've recommended them for their she's they make for certain models. I may make reference to that before their video ends. 55 bucks? Dude. I mean, a good price is awesome, but if the knife can't perform or if it fails, who cares, right? We've gone over that before. And that will take us to philosophy of use. And the performance in those POUs, let's hit it hard, zombie knife. You know, I got to tell you, I like the Resident Evil movies. I do. I know they're a little bit out there, but they're just fun. Mila does a great job as Alice. They're just cool. They're fun. They're like a video game movie. I get all that. And I was kind of stoked to see some blade action come into play in, I believe it was Resident Evil Extinction. And she was running to Nepalese Kukri's. Here's the movie props right here, a photograph. I think these are representative. Those were actually made out of uh, polymer or resin designed to make look like real kukris. Because obviously, obviously on set, she's not swinging around steel blades. Uh-uh, not going to happen. Someone's going to lose an arm at the very least. But she was doing some heavy damage with her kukris in that video, on <laughs> video, in that movie. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, yes, it's zombie, yes, it's science fiction, it's artificial, but what's not artificial is the, again, martial capabilities of a good kukri blade. Yes, they can delimb a zombie, they can delimb a human, heaven forbid. Use them with care, use them responsibly. These are serious weapons. The Ontario kukri is no different. Now, it may not be as heavy as a full-on Nepalese kukri, which is thicker and heavier and that heaviness equates to speed it equates to chopping performance and mayhem general mayhem is what we'll call it 
But the forward sweep of the blade, the forward weight of a Kukri, stuff we've talked about in other videos, impresses me. So like my intro, if you don't want to dick, dick around and you want to, let's take it to a more realistic philosophy of use. Um, I said zombie knife, but of course we can use defensive philosophy of use. I think you're reading between the lines and getting that, right? That's your sweet yes, spot. it could be used that way. But let's go to a more realistic POU, and that is as a woods blade. That's what takes an arm off. Thing, same thing I said for the cold steel, is that, hey, I can take the weight, that's a big if, by the way, in my system. I'm going to take a Kukri. I can delim. I know I'm going to be doing wilderness shelters. I don't want to mess around. I want to minimize TCE, time, calories, and energy while I'm up there. Here you go. Now, this one is overall in weight, 25 ounces, and that's with its sheath, which I'll briefly mention later. That's pretty light for a Kukri. Uh, 21 ounces for the blade itself. It's a 12 inch blade, 17 inches overall length. So it's about on par with the cold steel. If we compare them side by side, almost identical in size. The difference in weight is due once again to thickness. You can see it right there. So the cold steel is thicker. It's going to chop, hack better, more weight. The upside of this knife is that it'll be more portable, as you can imagine. In our testing with delimbing and yes, even chopping down trees, the knife is excellent. I won't say outstanding because that falls to the cold steel and a Nepalese kukri that is that real heavy, almost like a hatchet in weight. Those are going to chop well. And again, for reference, I don't spend my time up there chopping down trees with survival knives. I just do it for testing purposes and to prove that it can be done, right? An important distinction. Some people just tuning in may be a little bit confused. No, use a saw. That's best. Number one. So this is 0.26 inches in thickness, a little bit lighter, but yes, outstanding woods blade. Can it do everything that a woods blade needs to do? No, no blade does. You're gonna be making compromises. Is it, is it the best field dressing knife? No. Now Kukri guys that love and use only Kukris will tell you, well, you can get a smaller version, you can choke up on the blade, you have this technique, and I get all that. We can do that with any blade, right? But I'm saying, is it ideally suited to those tasks? Not really. To me, it's a chopper. Perhaps a penetrating knife, too, because, yes, it will penetrate quite well. Yeah. Collectible, I wouldn't say so. This is a user knife at 55 bucks, and you won't feel ashamed going out and just wasting it. You get a really expensive original Nepalese Kukri or whatever from whatever source, you may not feel that way. You know, do you really want to go out and get it all hacked up? I don't know. Maybe. And it's not a fake replica. There's a lot of fake replicas out there. This is a working knife that will perform pretty much on par with most Kukris, from what I've seen so far. The blade steel is 1095, and as I showed in another bracketed video, there is rust on it from our test. It happens, even though I try to keep those edges oiled up. And you put Vaseline on, that's the best. I just don't, the reason I don't like putting Vaseline on it, I'm talking about the knife by the way, in case you're wondering, is because then it gets in the sheath. And then when it gets dirt and, and grime and gunk in it, it stays in the sheath. You know, So guys who go, oh, you need to put Vaseline or this viscous blade protectant on it. It doesn't work. You need, Otherwise, you just gum it all up and you get dirt and scree inside your sheath. And it's there forever. No. But it, it'll rust. 1095, though, is a, ten, is a, a tough steel. This is kind of on the softer side. I think Rockwell, the way OKC puts it together, this model 6420, 53 to 58. And that's almost what you want for an abusing knife. One you're going to be hacking with, chopping with. You're going to be inducing a lot of stress in the blade. Says me, from experience. Full flat ground. Love it. Good relief edge. Out of box, relatively sharp. Not like outstandingly sharp. It didn't scare me coming out of here. Uh, I could have put a really sharp edge on it. It's going to take time because, like I've said in other reviews, these big blades with the curvature, the big belly on them, they're harder to sharpen. They just are. And do you need a, a working woods blade that sharp? No, especially when it's going to be diving into dirt. And No, mm -mm. just a working edge is good enough. If it was me, I'd leave this edge on here just the way it is. Which, by the way, I will. This is our knife. We're keeping it forever. I'm not selling it. It's good enough. Eventually I'll sharpen it. 
powder coated so it does have some rust resistance and as you hack and chop and split with it more and more it will of course wear off and whatever that's just a badge of honor like I've always said by the way it does split very well and it also batons very well because if you notice from this portion up it's almost like a regular survival knife it's just you know the crook down here and the kukri shape changes things but this is basically an eight inch or seven inch survival blade and you can split with this and i'm talking batoning through a log and like i've said in my big blade philosophy video i like the span capabilities of a big blade i want to go through the middle of the log get the dry wood in a wet situation blah 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 talked about it a lot great blade right here how about the handle craton it's long enough and i saw no battering issues there's your lanyard hole Craton is durable. Is it the best handle material? I don't know. Second kind of cool? Absolutely not for functionality. Yeah, it works pretty good. Made in the good old USA too. USA. For 55 bucks? Wow, I guess it can be done. On to the sheath. Uh, it's okay. But for $55, you're not going to be getting like the cold steel Securex sheath. That just ain't going to happen. You can make a Kydex. Go to Red Hill... Uh, Red Hill Kydex and have them make one. It's going to add weight and it's definitely going to add, add cost. I would say probably around 95 bucks would be that sheet. Just ballparking it. it. I'll show you some Red Hill here in a second in competitive options. Uh, sheath works good. I mean, it's not leather, so it won't absorb moisture. And I had this one soaked several time, times during the testing process. And since it's ballistic nylon, low quality, I might add. It is riveted, however. Uh, it will hold moisture to some degree, and I think that, that's how that edge kind of rusted. Whatevs. How about this? Talking about the Time Machine and TMP. Shit. <laughs> also an Ontario blade, the Artac 2. Huh. You thought I forgot about that knife. Not quite. This is 29 ounces, so it's going to be 4 ounces heavier. It is a big freaking blade. It's 1095. I think they're running around 100, 115 now. When I got this, it was like 80. Great knife awesome big handle and this is one of those she's i was talking about from chestnut ridge this is a kydex that we bought from them and it just destroys the original oem sheath it's awesome and it adds very little weight it's trim i think i reviewed this separately about three years ago so rtac 2 um, how about this in chopping performance if you were to chop let's say we're chopping down a medium sized tree which to me let's say 10 inches in diameter again this is just for testing not for energy savings uh, which knife would you go for? Nothing fancy. Kukri. All day long, bro. The Kukri shape, like we we're talking about, is incredible. Very capable. Competitive options. Cold Steel Laredo Bowie. Bowie. Uh, and this is, I don't know, if it's just for fun. I haven't shown you this one in a long time. Yeah, it's still around. This has a grip, synthet, synthet, I can't speak, synthetic suede on the handle. I dura coated it years ago. It's more of a show knife. But it's capable. Yeah, it's really capable. I think this one is an SK5 steel. And this is a Red Hill Kydex sheath in Digicam tan. Great sheath. So you can make this for that. I, I don't know how the Kukri design would work, though, in the Kydex, since it'd have to kind of rotate and snap in. It could probably work. Cool knife, though. There's no way it perform as well as that. And chopping and stabbing and as a fighting knife? Oh, yeah. I think you'd have to depend on the skill of the user, but this has a ton of reach. It's very fast in hand. I like it. I reviewed this one last summer. This is wearing a Red Hill Kydex in Atax. No, 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 no. Oh, dudes. That's a cool pattern. By the way, go to my channel page. You'll see a link on there. Use code nut and fancy. I think you save, I don't know, 10, 15%, whatevs, when you order Red Hill. And there's lots of Kydex. That's just one that I use. This is the, any any guesses? TMP Pierce, what knife is this? Swamp Rat Rodent 9. That is correct, whoever said that. Very good. This is in 52100 steel by Swamp Rat. I talked about this in review. Raved about it. It's not a cheap knife, though. It's 200 and that's without the freaking sheath, which it does not come with, which sucks. And I railed about that as well. You put a nice sheath on it, and this thing is the bomb. It's a heavy knife too. It's a lot heavier than this one. A lot more expensive. So basically for this setup with the Kydex, this knife, uh, I could buy five of these. 
How's that for value? A little value equation. Talking about value. Ontario just does such a great job with value. And I think that's all they got for competitive options. I didn't want to pull any more knives out. And we sold some too. 55 bucks. You're going to be hard pressed getting a US made Kukri. In fact, I think that is the only one out there. And I hope it becomes more popular, perhaps from this video, because it deserves it. Because the Kukri is, as you guys know, an amazing chopping knife, a great woods blade, an amazing zombie killer. Resident Evil style zombie killer. You chop off zombie arms, hands, heads. All the stuff you see in the movies. Oh, and for that matter, Walking Dead. Dude, why aren't they rocking zombie, uh, I'm talking kukris in Walking Dead? I look at their weaponry loadouts like, man, I need to be a weapons advisor to that series. Eh, they have some dumb choices. Whatever. Knife is highly recommended. It is a solid 10 out of 10. Uh, it doesn't quite have the same cutting performance due to weight and blade thickness as the Cold Steel, but it's about quarter of the price. Questions out.